everybody. Uh, so sorry I'm late. Um, I've been stuck in a traffic jam. Um, and hence I'm not in uniform and my house is a big stuff. Um, welcome to this week's live q and I hope you are all well and happy. God, I really do look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. Um, what have I got to tell you today? I'm hoping that our lovely um, ladies are in the background about to fire me some questions. Um, what have, what's my news? Have I got any news? Have I got any, oh gosh, 37 people are all waiting. I'm so sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm trying to think what the news, what, what news, what news. So practical parenting class tonight at 6.30. So anybody who wants to learn about safe sleep, nappies, um, bathing, the cord, jaundice, all that sort of stuff, please drop me a line and I will gladly uh, sign post it. Um, honestly, I feel I'm running late, late, late. This is not very professional, is it? Do my lipstick, do my hair. Get it online. Oh, you should all know me by now. So, come on, people. You need to give me some questions. Um, I had a conversation today with a lady, really, really lovely lady, and actually it was quite um, an interesting chat. This lady's got a health condition that may well, it leaves her immune suppressed, basically. And because of this, there is a possibility this she may not be able to breastfeed um, because it would stop her being able to have her treatment. And it was a really sort of sweet conversation with this lady because she feels so torn and just desperately wants to breastfeed but also feels guilty about the fact that she may not be able to breastfeed and I suppose the reason I'm sort of saying this is because if any of you are finding yourself in the position even if it's not for health reasons just because you feel you don't want to breastfeed you shouldn't feel guilty don't feel guilty about that and like I said to her if your kids end up in prison then you might need to feel a bit guilty that you might have done something wrong but don't feel guilty because you decided not to breastfeed hello Jack I shot three rats today and killed one of them. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Any animal rights activists on the live show today, please just ignore my son. No, it's actually about a foot, foot long as well. He's just talking about rats. I mean, I'm not a big fan, but uh, there you go. So, yeah, so don't feel guilty because, actually, as long as your babies are fed, it's fine. It's fine. Um, right. I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant, healthy baby, had chicken pox as a child and also had immunosis as a child. I have shingles. What can I use to ease my pain? I've been seen by an obstetrician and they said they will do more scans just to keep the situation in control. Any advice would be appreciated. Well, I am so sorry because shingles is miserable. Um, and I really don't think you'll be able to take any more pain relief than is advised by your GP, basically, or the obstetrician looking after you. Um, so I don't have a huge amount of advice. Unfortunately, midwives generally just tend to deal with the normal and anything that's abnormal, we shoo you on to consultants and stuff. Um, but I just, my heart goes out to you because that's not pleasant. But I would go back to your GP because although we as midwives can't say, yes, go and take this or go and take that, they can sort of prescribe stronger medications. And actually, sometimes it's better having a stronger medication than we wouldn't normally recommend in pregnancy than suffering with the pain. Suffering with pain is not great either. So we do need to keep on control of that. So go back to your GP if you're not happy. And I hope you get better soon, sweetheart. Um, I'm five weeks pregnant and having horrendous nausea and heart palpitations, especially at night whilst trying to sleep. Any remedies or tips with this um, or make it comfortable when lying down. I'm so tired, but I lie down and I can't get comfortable with my heart flutters so bad, which leads to nausea. Any help or appreci uh, advice appreciated? So there's two different things going on here. Obviously, you've got really lots of nausea, and at five weeks, that's still that's actually quite early to get such significant na uh, nausea. Um, what I would say is that the reason you're getting this nausea is because of a wave of hormones. The heart flutters, though, are a separate issue, and it could be because your blood volume is increasing. Um, it would be very interesting to know whether you have been for an early scan and confirmed that you have just got one baby in here, because it's this excessive um, nausea and the heart flutters. I just wonder what's causing it, but I think you do need to touch base with your GP if you're having palpitations, because that's not normal to have palpitations. 
The nausea, you need to stay hydrated. You need to eat little and often. Um, try sleeping a bit more propped up. Avoid sleeping flat on your back because that may not, well not be helping. Um, but I think, yeah, I think you should definitely go and get checked out with your GP if you're having heart flutters that are this bad. I was wondering if you can pre-make bottles up and store them in the fridge. I know the advice is to make up a bottle at a time, but I was wondering what your advice would be. Oh, Nia, that's asking me to be naughty. Um, anybody who's been on my infant feeding class will know that um, what I talk about when we talk about um, preparation of bottles is that when I had Jack, the specimen who's just walked past you, um, I formula fed him after three weeks and um, we did used to make the bottles up as we went along. Um, however, the guidance is, as Nia has said, that you are supposed to make the bottles up as you go along and not store them in the fridge. So to be fair, Nia, my advice can't really deviate from that because that is the, the guidance. Um, what I would say is that um, if you're not going to follow that guidance, that you need to make sure that your, your fridge is exceptionally clean. Because one of the things that we talk about is when we all sort of say, oh, that sounds like a really hard work making them up as we go along, is when was the last time you cleaned out your fridge? And actually, for the most of us, we don't give it a good old clean out um, quite as regularly as we should do. But my advice has got to be, given the fact that I'm live on air, my, my advice has got to be that you follow the guidance. Um, I mean, the other thing that you can use is the perfect prep machine, but you will find that that does go against the guidance of the NHS. Um, but that's not to say that it's, um, well, I had to, oh, you could have got a disease if I didn't wash myself outside. And that was my 17 year old son. Um, at least he had a towel wrapped around him. Um, the use of the perfect prep does go against the guidance. However, people do use them. We don't see reports of problems with them. Um, so yeah, but the guideline is that you make them up as you go along. You've taken me onto a very uncharted territory there, Nina. I'll have a, a wave of attack after this, I'm sure. Um, has there been any changes yet with partners attending appointments, etc.? I saw something on Facebook from NHS Norfolk. Will each local hospital likely release information? I think each local hospital will deal with this differently and in different times, unfortunately. So I don't think there's ever there's going to be a mass statement. The government won't get into, involved in, in local policy with regards to things like visiting um policies and that sort of thing so you're going to find it comes down to individual hospitals my hope is that we are going to start relaxing these measures i think if we are allowed to relax and go to the cinema and and do all of those things that we are social um you know where it has been relaxed that i think that this is a really key important part um i had an email from a, a dad yesterday that was saying how tough he'd found it not being able to support his partner um so i think it just it goes it goes deeper than just not being allowed a visitor there. So I really am hopeful, Amy, that we're going to start seeing some movement in this area. Let's just hope that we don't get a second wave and get it taken away again. Um, M, hello, first time mum here. My mum has just told me that she, her sister, mum and gran all delivered babies very quickly. As in water's broken, baby was here in about an hour. Is this something I need to bring up with my midwife? I don't think with your midwife particularly, um, it would be really interesting um, to find out what their blood group is um, and to find out what your blood group is um, because it could be that they are A positive and midwives generally tend to have a bit of a theory around um, blood group and that women who are A positive often labour and deliver their babies very quickly. There's absolutely no research to suggest to support it whatsoever but I would be so interested given the fact that you've got all of these women in the same family um, I'd really love to know what your blood group is, so please tell me. But when I say not with your midwife, they're not going to do anything. But when you actually do start in labour and you ring up the triage line to say, I'm contracting or whatever you ring up to say, I would definitely say to them, everybody in your family has had very, very quick labours. Could I just come in to get checked out? Just so that you can reassure yourself. Um, and also get yourself onto my free labour and birth class because we talk about unexpected home delivery in there. So I can give you some tips to get caught out. After reading online about sleeping positions, I feel I'm finding myself sleeping less because I'm worried about turning over onto my back or right hand side. I'm 27 weeks pe pregnant. I do have a pillow with the back piece, but still turn over. Can I really do a lot of damage to the baby? Okay, Vicky, it's important that you sleep. 
What I would say is that when we lay on our back when we're pregnant, what, what often happens is your, your bum falls back a bit and it applies pressure on your vena cava, which is your main artery, and it's a bit like a hose pipe and it squishes it. Now, most women cannot lie flat on their back because when they do, they get really dizzy and, and lightheaded and so their body naturally wakes them up. What I would say is if you wake up and you're on your back, move. Um, but don't let it stop you sleeping. At the end of the day, you can't really control what you're doing in your sleep. Um, obviously, if your partner wakes up and sees you flat on your back, he needs to give you a nudge. But just go to sleep with the best of intentions and do the best that you can. There isn't really anything else that you can do other than that. But it is very important that you sleep. So don't get yourself in a tiz about it. But you've just got to try your best not to be sleeping flat on your back. I, my little boy is six weeks old. I'm breastfeeding him exclusively. Almost every time I feed him, he's eating quickly and swallowing air. I always make sure when I feed him that he's calm and there's no distraction. He spills milk afterwards, even after an hour and a half. He even wakes up at night because of that. He also has problems with wind. I've tried Invercol in a few days, but it seems like his spills got worse. Um, one of the things I always recommend is taking babies to see cranial osteopaths. Um, because they can often um, help with any reflux issues um, and release any tension in their tummies. Um, it's not generally a major issue if they are positing and being a little bit sick after feeds. As long as he's putting weight on and he's giving you wet and dirty nappies, then it's more of an inconvenience really that he's waking up and being a bit sick. But it is quite normal for babies to be a bit sick as long as he's not spilling every you know the whole contents of the the milk i mean some babies literally fire the whole bottle back at you um, and somehow they still manage to put weight on so i think it's going to come down to what their weight is like um and um and yeah maybe try the cranial osteopath i'm 20 weeks and i have a strong pain just on the right side of my abs the midwife said it's nothing but i have this pain since i was five weeks wondering if you could give me some advice thanks I think, um, given the fact that you've had it since you're five weeks, that your midwife is probably right in the fact that it is probably nothing to worry about. But obviously, I can imagine having it for 15 weeks, that's quite a long time. What it could boil down to is the fact that you've had postural changes. And what happens is when we have postural changes that are incorrect over long periods of time, we're going to get pains and niggles and that sort of thing so I would recommend doing something like pregnancy pilates or pregnancy yoga that's going to really help you to stand correctly um, it's also worth making sure that um, you are having your blood pressure taken although I wouldn't have thought that's in your abs I was thinking you said shoulder but it's your abs isn't it um, I think it is just probably where you are stretching you've got more volume that sort of thing um, and like I said, given that it's a long period of time that it's going over, um, it's unlikely to be anything sinister. I am currently pregnant with my third child. I have had two previous sections, so this is a scheduled C-section. I knew during the last stop that there were some complications, but all I was told afterwards that there was a complication with scar tissue. I have just had my 12-week scan. Everything looks okay with the baby, thankfully, but she said this will definitely have to be my last due to complications with my previous section. When I got her to read out my notes, I got quite a shock. My baby was stuck behind scar tissue, which was connected to my bladder, which was connected to my womb. Everything was a mess, basically. She tried to persuade me to have sterilisation after this baby is born. My worry is, will the same thing happen this time? Is my baby at risk? Why did no one tell me or discuss this sooner? I feel now I should have looked into this further, but assumed everything was okay when I hadn't heard anything else. I feel I never recovered fully from my last stop and now I know why. I am just worried for my baby, frustrated, and my husband is also worried for my well-being. Okay, what I would say is probably likely, I mean, I don't know what the time difference is between one baby and another here, but what I would say is that the likelihood is, is that they probably removed quite a bit of this scar tissue um, and, and by the nature they will have maybe had to separate some of the scar tissue to get to your baby. So it does sound like it was a tricky cesarean section um i think with things like this what i would say is at the end of the day at this stage that you there's nothing you can do about what's ahead 
I think it is good that it's in their, in your notes and that they're aware of it moving into the caesarean section so it won't be as much of a surprise to anybody. Um, but we do sometimes have caesareans that are just that little bit trickier because of scar tissue. Um, so it's impossible to say whether, um, whether it's going to be the same sort of trickiness or not. But the difference is, is that when you have an elective caesarean, it's almost like your baby is not really aware of anything that's going on because as far as your baby's concerned, um, it's not gone through labour. So it's not starting out this procedure really tired. It's tucked up in its house, completely unaware that it's about to be lifted out. So actually the struggles generally are before we even get to your baby. So I really wouldn't worry about the well-being of your baby. What we just want is that um, you recover well and that you are kept into the, in the loop as to how the procedure was and what the situation was whilst they were in there. But I really wouldn't let it cause you any major worry. Um, and I I would speak to the consultant afterwards and ask if you can speak to the consultant or the registrar who does your caesarean to discuss whether they, having gone in there again, if that is what they still recommend is that you don't have any more children, assuming that, you know, you're happy with that. But it's just good to have that conversation again in the immediate rather than it being something that's historic that you haven't really ever been talked about. So I think um, don't worry for now. You're going to be absolutely fine. Um, it may just take a bit longer than the norm. So I think it's good that you're going into it knowing that from the point that they start, you may not necessarily meet a baby six or seven minutes after the start of the procedure. It may be a little bit longer, 10, 20 minutes before they actually get to the baby. But all of that time, your baby is as safe as houses because it's still encased where it should be. OK, I hope that gives you some reassurance. Can you please give advice on baby movements? I'm 25 weeks with a low placenta at the front, but have felt movement, both feeling and seeing bump move. Thank you. Um, can you please give advice on baby movements? I'm 25 weeks with a low placenta at the front, but have felt movement, both feeling and seeing bump move. Thank you. Um, I'm not quite sure, Emma, what advice you want, because that sounds perfect if you're seeing and feeling your bump move. Um, so I think you should be reassured of that. I'm not quite sure what I can add. So if you want to come back to me, if there's something I'm missing from that question. I'd like to ask what is best and safest thing to use to cut baby's nails. Any recommendations? Oh, I do. And you know what? I've, I've just, hang on one minute, because I've just been sent this. Here it is. And I thought, oh, it looks quite good. So it's called a nail snail. And it's got like a little got like a tiny little um, V there and I think you just sort of skim it around the side of the nails um, so yeah something like that and I've got a discount code one minute what a timely question whoever asked that we don't know but it was a timely question let's have a look what the discount code is here we go here we go the discount code is honest MW can I type that in the bottom? Uh, and it's uh, nail snail. I thought they looked quite cool. So there you go. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Um, how do you get baby to take a bottle? I'm breastfeeding and due to go back to work in a few weeks. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm assuming by this question that you've not introduced the bottle to the baby prior to this point so that does make it tricky because babies are suddenly opinionated once we get to the four or five month mark um what i would say is um try and get someone else to do it is one thing i would i would certainly don't you do it because your baby will be like what's my mum thinking silly mum you know so i would really get someone else to try and just be persistent um, it's not easy. I think you're good to think about it a few weeks before. Um, if your baby is going into nursery, they are the best people to go through the trauma. So maybe have a time where you take them in and say, look, I need you to try and help me. Um, but yeah, definitely get somebody else to do it. What I would, if I would say is don't, don't fall into the trap of buying every single different bottle on the market. Just your baby will get used to one over the other 
anyway. Um, so yeah, just uh, have a go. Oh, so Emma's come back to us and said that she's O, o positive, not A positive. So that's got nothing to um, to do with my theory of quick deliveries. Um, but yeah, what I would say is it is a possibility um, that you're going to fall into the same category as your parents. So yeah, I'll definitely get onto one of my free classes where I talk you through a handbook. Um, Ellie, is this midwife number? I have absolutely no idea, my lovely. Um, I've no idea. I can't, it's just a mobile telephone number, so I don't know without you ringing it. Is it still recommended to burp a baby after feeding? Just I haven't seen this mentioned in, in any classes, etc. Um, generally, breastfed babies, the theory is that they don't need winding in, in quite the same way. Um, but I always uh, winded Isabel just to have a, give her a few minutes sort of upright before putting her down. Um, but there's no fixed drills with some, some babies. Um, are windier than others so you just have to sort of find out which one is which i'm not sure amy whether you've done my classes uh, in practical parenting it's so it's not necessarily on the um the list of items particularly but we do sometimes talk about it um so it's practical parenting is a good one and that's on tonight if anybody wants to jump onto that um baby is five months that we're trying to bottle feed so yeah definitely try and get someone else to do it for you I'm 37 weeks and struggling with pains in my lower stomach and back, but not in labour. But baby is pushing down a lot. Baby is in my pelvis and has been for a while. My chronic migraines are also worse. Is there any safe exercise that I can do at home to push baby down more? I was induced with my son, so this is my first time going into labour naturally at full time. There isn't really. Your baby will make its own descent, and I certainly wouldn't be trying to push baby down into the pelvis. You you could end up hurting yourself. So you just really need to take things, you know, steady. Uh, maybe take some paracetamol if it's really painful, um, especially if those migraines are, are, all, are really bothering you. Do make sure you are taking regular paracetamol. But no, your baby will make its way as and when, really. Me and my partner have recently discussed about when we will be having another baby. Our current is four months old. Gosh, that's impressive. He mentioned starting to try in August 2021. I have been thinking about age gaps and the struggles. Is there a good age gap or will the first two years and two months old at least? Our first will be two years old and two months at least. I don't want to struggle too much, but also want a nice age gap so they can bond nicely. So... When I had Jack, we had planned to have our second baby um, sooner, but it didn't pan out that way. There was various things that happened. Um, but I have got a four year, four and a half year gap between mine. And as much as they argue, they are really very close. Um, now, I don't know whether, I mean, that they are a boy and a girl. So I think they're as close as brother and sister can be. Um, whether they would have been as close if they'd have been sisters or brothers, I don't know with that age gap. Um, my sister has two babies that are close together um, and they play really well together. But like you said, in that early time, it was quite difficult. And I look back and I think I would have really struggled to have two little ones at home all the time. So for me, Isabel was, uh, Jack started school at the 3rd of September and Isabel was born on the 28th of September. So I had, it was perfect really. I had three weeks of him at school, getting him settled and then she arrived. So from a timing point of view, it couldn't have been better. Um, but then from my sister's point of view, she sort of got them both done and quick out of the way and she didn't have that gap. So I think there are pros and cons for both. And I think it's what you feel um, feel happy with, really. Can you choo choose to have a C-section? You can. Um, you will need to have a meeting with your midwife, uh, the consultant, to discuss your reasons why you are opting for that um, over going for a natural vaginal delivery um but you know you can talk it through with the midwife at uh, the consultant and you know you can opt for it's called a maternal request um cesarean um i'm due my second baby in september my first baby was born by an emergency section and there will be 20 months between them i've been offered an elective c-section or to try a vaginal birth. I realise ultimately that it will be a personal decision, but me and partner are really struggling to make a decision. On the one hand, I want to try a vaginal delivery as I feel I should. However, I hear all I hear is the horror stories about tearing and long labours where babies are affected and it really frightens me. On the other hand, I'm aware that for opting for a C-section is opting for major surgery and I feel like I would be judged. I'm really confused. What should I do? Okay, so this is exactly what happened to me. So I had an emergency cesarean with Jack after a long labour. 
And then I had an elective caesarean with Isabel four and a half years later. And at the time, this is obviously quite a long time ago, we weren't really encouraged to do a vaginal delivery. We had VBAC. Um, it was sort of, well, you've had one section, you'll have another. Um, I think had I been sort of encouraged to have a vaginal delivery, I would have been a bit like, mm, not so sure, having had the trouble the first time. The thing with me is that the reason I had the caesarean is because Jack had got himself into an awkward position. So to be fair, it didn't necessarily mean follow that Isabel would do exactly the same. It may have been that if I'd have tried for a vaginal delivery, I would have had one. But I was still a bit unsure about what to do. So what my um, rationale was, was that if I hadn't gone into natural labour by the time my caesarean date was scheduled, which was at 39 weeks, that I would go for the elective. If I had gone into labour, I would give it a go. So that was how I made my decision, really. And, and as it was, I didn't go into labour, so I went for an elective. And it was lovely. Far nicer than the emergency. It was a really nice. Went in, sat there, reading my Hello magazine. Um, and then just went down and got my baby. It was, it was very, very pleasant, very civilised. Please help ideas. My two-year-old full pitch scream when he doesn't like something or get his own way. Can you advise? Oh, there's lots of quick retorts to that. I went out with my friend today for breakfast and um, her perfect baby has turned into a perfect toddler. She was very opinionated. God bless her. She's so gorgeous. Um, it's not really my area, Sarah. I think you've got to have a stash of wine in for the end of it. No, don't. She'll end up an alcoholic like me. Um, I think you've just got to keep your cool. Um, and I think the more they scream, the quieter you need to become to a certain degree. Um, and then you've got to be consistent. And I think that's one thing I look back, I wasn't consistent at all. You know, can I have a biscuit? No. Tantrum, are we here? Here, have a biscuit. And I fell very, very much headlong, blindfolded into that trap. So I think what I would do is sit down, work out what your boundaries are, what the rules are, and be very, very firm with them. It may be time to introduce the naughty step, um, reward charts, that sort of thing. It's really difficult. It's not an easy phase, but it will pass. Um, yeah, go back to the wine, my love. Uh, is the hair dying in the third trimester? Okay, I look a mess, but I have been hanging on. Oh, no, I get your hair done, Amy. Get your hair done. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I guess I'm asking how much will the placenta affect what I feel? Baby seems to be active. I feel baby a lot and rest days when I only feel baby when I sit and concentrate on what I feel. It's my first baby, so I don't really know what I should be expecting. What you need to think, Emma, is about, not necessarily about how many movements, it's about reassurance. Are the movements enough to reassure you that your baby is okay? And if at any point you feel, well, oh, I'm not so sure, then just get checked out. It's the easiest way to manage it because I think if we start thinking about, well, how many times have we felt it? We felt this. It's like, if you know that your baby has been on the whole, on, off, on, off throughout, all, you know, all the time, um, then that's fine. I mean, they will have periods for 40 minutes, an hour where they're sleeping, but you should be feeling enough movement that you're reassured. Um, I have a three-week-old baby who I love dearly. <laughs> oh, bless you. So please don't judge. I just want to know he has a lot of hair on his forehead. I've seen a lot of babies who have this and I wanted to know if it will fall off. He also has it around his ears. Did anyone else's baby have this and when did it fall off and can you do something to help it shed? Right, you can't do anything about it. Leave, just leave it, but it will go. Um, quite often babies have it a lot on their back as well. Um, and it's, a lot of it is to do with the protection inside. So you will find that over the coming weeks and months, it will really go. So please don't worry about it but please don't try and move it because if you try and remove it, you could end up with regrowth. So just leave it. It will go away. I promise you. Uh, don't judge it at all. Um, hi, Sarah. Louise. Uh, this live session is for midwives questions. Uh, please send... Oh, sorry. I'm confused. Um, please send your general questions via messenger for our Ask Our Fans. I don't know what that one is about. What's that one about? Um, oh yes, Sarah, to you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Don't worry, Sarah. Um, although they're, they're probably telling me off because I'm telling you to get a glass of wine. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, what's the best product for use on my one-year-old as she's got burned on the arm? I don't, I can't answer that, Ray, very easily because I don't know what she's been burnt with and I can't really advise because I, I can't see it or assess it. So if you are concerned, 
I would definitely take her to the walk-in centre. Tried painkillers pain for both migraines and pains in my lower back and stomach, but no help. I am under the consultant for my migraines, but not seen them since being pregnant. I was on Torimate, which I was told could deform babies, so I uh, came off that before getting pregnant. The last time my migraines were like this, my son was a newborn, and I couldn't remember who him or my partner were. I'm scared it'll happen again. I'm debating whether it's worth asking for an induction again so I can get back on my migraine medications to ease my pain. Is it worth asking my midwife as I see her on Friday? I need to be as with it as possible. I absolutely think, yes, you need to go and discuss this with your midwife and your consultant because this is debilitating by the sounds of it, Michelle. Um, and I think it's something that needs proper management um, with your consultant. Um, yeah, so you need to get that checked out. Um, okay, loads of questions today, and I am so sorry that I was late today, um, and doing my hair and my makeup when I got here, but I hope that you found the questions useful, um, as always, do go and give me a follow over at The Honest Midwife, um, I'm not here next Tuesday, because I'm going on a sneaky, uh, city break with my husband to Bath, anybody got any, um, recommendations on what to do in Bath, please let me know, we're going with no kids for two days, so I won't be here next Tuesday, but I will be back as normal at 4pm next Thursday on Facebook. Lovely to see you all and I shall see you soon.